two and a half years ago, the city spun the library off. It created a, an independent agency out of the library and took it off of the city budget. Uh, and created an independent library board that was appointed and is now elected. Uh, that acts as the executive for the library, and the library developed an independent status. Uh, with that independent status, the, the new board decided that it would be very important to figure out where the library had come from, where it was, and where it was going. So the first thing that we did when we did that, the, the first action, major action we took was to bring in a firm that specializes in strategic planning for libraries. And after a three-month process, two public surveys, one of everybody who walked into the library for a whole week, and one of 300 members of the community, uh, we asked as many questions as we could, we got as many responses as we could. And what we found was that Ferndale wanted much, much more in a library. The people liked the people who worked here, they liked the hominess, they loved the location, but what they didn't like were three things. The fact that there weren't enough books, there wasn't a big enough collection. The fact that the space was small and cramped, and the fact that there was limited access, there wasn't the kind of services that they, that they needed, and the hours weren't nearly long enough. And at the time, the library was really about as squeezed as you could make a library. The budget was as small as you could get it. It was about 60% of what it had been only 30 years before. Uh, and it was at the very brink of staying in the current category of library that was in. Our hours were down to 40 hours a week. Uh, and if we dropped another half an hour, we would have fallen out of the category of library that we're in. Our collection was small and relatively old, and the space wasn't used in an efficient manner. And we've tried to take care of a lot of those problems in a, in a, in as, as best we could with the limited budget that we've got. And we've gotten pretty far, but it's clear that we haven't gone nearly far enough. And when we did the strategic planning process, what became really clear was that the, the demands that Ferndale citizens had for a library really needed a much bigger financial situation as well. We can do a certain amount with what we've got, any more, we needed to go to the voters and ask them for more money. And so I think most of you know that on May 8th, on the ballot, uh, there will be a question in which the library will ask the voters of Ferndale for one additional mill. That amounts to about a 2.2% tax increase, so for every dollar you pay now, you pay about a dollar or two. Uh, and there are a whole variety of ways you can figure out how much that would cost you individually, uh, but it, it's a relatively minor tax increase. On average, the, the the average for a resident would pay about an additional $5.41 a month. Now, when we did the survey, what we actually found is that Ferndale residents think that the library saves them about $18 a month. So we think we're a pretty good bargain. And the more we've done, the more research we've done on this, the more we find that every dollar put into a library generates two, three, four, five dollars in return for the community as a whole. So what we've done as part of this millage request is to prepare a very detailed budget and a very detailed plan of what we're actually going to do with money of the citizens of Ferndale because we realize that it's their money, we want to use it as well as we possibly can and give back to the community as much as we possibly can. And our request in that sense has three parts. One is the staffing part. Right now we have about six full-time employees and the village would allow us to take that to 12. And that doesn't mean just more people in the library, that means more hours. To go from the current 50 hours a week to about 70 hours a week and that means Saturday hours, some Sunday hours during the school year, and it also means longer hours during the week. It also means more services, so adult book clubs, teen programs, we would get a, libra a librarian friendly who works in teen and young adult area, we would have a full-time children's librarian, a whole variety of services that can't be provided now with the limited funds and limited staff that we've got. The other thing that we would do, that quarter, about a quarter of the millage would, would go for that purpose. Another quarter would go for collection. We have a good collection, but it's not nearly good enough. And we have one of the smallest new book budgets of any library in the other. That means you come in, you find a good selection, but not all of the latest books, not all of the things that you want. And so about a quarter of the millage would go for changing the collection budget. And that means really increasing that budget for new books by about 150%. So doubling and then half again from what we've got right now. And according to our surveys, when we've talked to voters, that's what we need, actually, to get the kind of service that voters want. And then the last piece, about half of that millage, would go for what we call space. We've got staff, we've got stuff, and space. And that's what the architects are going to talk to you about. What we've got right now is a library of about 12,000 square feet. That's just about half a square foot per person in Ferndale. When libraries are built these days, they're built at about a, a foot and a quarter per person. And the average in the local area is between about 0.8 and about 1.2 per person. That means we're about half the size of the libraries being built in the, of the libraries that already exist in this area per person per resident. So we've created a plan, a series of plans, to increase the library's size to make it 
in line with the other communities in the area. And not just to bring it in line with those communities, but provide what people desperately need. They need a bigger kids section. They've all told us that. A lot of parents with kids have said that that's one of the reasons they go to other communities. They need a dedicated teen section, and that's something that a lot of people said. We don't have any space for that right now. There's not a good comfortable reading area. There's not enough stacks, actually, to take all the books that we've got. And there's not a dedicated computer space. And there's not a lot of space for the other things that libraries need these days that didn't exist when this library was built in 1954. Since it's been built, the only addition they've made is to put in this rather unpleasant drop ceiling, and that's it. Nothing else has been done to improve this library, to make it aesthetically pleasing, and to, and to expand it to do what libraries do these days. So realizing that need, we did a six-month search process. We interviewed five different architectural firms, all of whom have some specialization in civic buildings, urban buildings, urban buildings libraries. Uh, and after a careful search, we settled on a firm that we found to be absolutely the finest uh, in the state, actually in the region. Uh, the buildings that they've designed are just stunning. And they've been a real pleasure to work with.